At first, I mix the cards up very lightly, not putting too much into it. But I in the higher power in my head to give me the nicest and uh, most accurate reading for this client to help them as possible. Because my heart is always with my clients, always to do the best that I can for the person that I'm reading for. And then I lay them out in a nice tidy little spread like this and try to make sure that all of them are a little bit exposed so that the client can run their hands over the cards or feel on top of the cards while concentrating on their question to draw me out one that they feel compelled to. Now, upon doing this, they'll run their hands over the cards and they'll feel compelled to one card and they'll lay it out for me like this. Now it doesn't matter to them whether the card is in the upright position or the upside down position. What's important is the position and uh, connection with where the psychic reader is setting because this is how it's, it's to be read. In this particular case, the card comes up in the upside down position. Now, what I do is I assess this card lightly, but I don't give it too much thought because the other cards that come up in connection with where it's placed is going to have the strongest of influence on it. So at this point, I move the cards over in front of the client and I let them begin to mix them for me. In this case, I'm going to do it for myself since there is no client here and present. So I'll mix these cards up. I'm the clan at this particular point. And then I put them all together. Now, as I've mixed these cards, as the client has mixed these cards, they put all their feelings, their hopes, their desires, and their questions into them. And this is very important for the cards to find a unity with them at all. You know, see, because that's what's happening at this table. It's a unity between me, the reader, the client, and the cards themselves. Now, they put the cards back in order themselves after they mix them themselves. And then they hand me the cards. And I move the one that were taken at the very beginning and to the center because this is what we call the significator card. Very important card because it's something that directly represents the client themselves or the question that they have, the desire. And I begin to turn the cards up for them. Secondly, the card that couples with it, another strong influence on the question or on the subject of the reading. A lot of times you'll get one that dictates the, the, uh, the appearance of anyone that might be being questioned about by the subject or by the subject themselves. In the cards that I have here, it's two queens crossing. In this case, it makes a lot of sense because it's me reading the cards for me. And so, really, two medium to dark haired women cards are showing up. One is the Queen of Pentacles, and what this represents is one that's nurturing or giving, which would be me giving the reading. Uh, to the other aspect of myself, which is the Queen of Swords, which would be more inquisitive. So the Queen of Pentacles is looking down into the pinnacle itself, almost as though a scrying ball. And so she is basically the reader, where one is subtle, keen, and quick-witted, logical, trying to balance things out within her own head for strength within her own life. And so therefore, it would be a representation of myself the, the querent, the subject of the reading, the one who has the questions. On the basis of the question asked, 
Though I didn't ask any particular questions, really just doing a demonstrative layout for you, the lover's card comes up on the bases, which is a really good generic answer considering that nine and a half times out of ten, the client is going to ask you about love first. Why? Because everybody needs love. No matter what form or fashion. However, the lover's card being more of a masculine to feminine or feminine to feminine on a lover basis or, or masculine to masculine on a lover basis. Basically, being more important uh, within the aspect of uh, long-lasting internal burning love. Now, the card that I would lay next is generally to do with the past. Actually, not generally. It's downright to the point to do with the past. I always read this as a, as a recent past card. An influence that is now on the verge of passing or has recently passed. And the card that we have here happens to be the Four of Cups. And it's embarking on new ventures and without hesitation. Feeling a sense of dullness. One wants to venture further quickly. And the card that crowns, it would go basically with the foundational card, uh, which was to do with the lovers, the base card, the fourth card played. And the one that comes up with me is a medium to light haired, light eyed young man, which describes actually my mate to a team. And he always comes up the Knight of Cups. Why? Because he's, well, not only half my age, but he is a cup. He's a person of strong love and deep devotion. Loyalty extends himself beyond and above everything. Is strong in his ethics and believes in everything to do with old-fashioned values, ways, and a very reflective person altogether. So the card is perfect for him. The card that comes up in the foremost, an influence is yet to come and will come very soon, is uh, sending someone to represent you in an undertaking. In this particular case, it's talking about me uh, representing myself for you and for your viewing pleasure. Uh, I'm here to uh, show or teach you something. I'm here to take you on a journey, actually, and that's perfect for this card. Not only is it a card of sending someone to represent you in an undertaking, but it's to, uh, it's to represent someone. It's to take someone on a journey if you're the person that's, that's, uh, being sent in. And that's perfect for the case. So, the, the uh, foregoing card, which would be the card immedi immediately to the uh, right on the Celtic cross, is to do with the immediate to near future. Now we enter into the wand, and on the base of the wand is always the place of fears within the Celtic cross method. And uh, the card that comes up is non-victory. Me, I'm a perfectionist, and this card makes perfect sense for me, considering I'm always afraid of failing in my ambitions, and I might be afraid that I'm going to stutter and stammer and screw up this video, which really has been an influence of mine since we began here um, within the past few minutes. Now, the Place of Fears is your first card in the wand, and on the very base of the wand, actually. And then the second card up on it, which would be a family influence. Now, a card, the card that comes up representing family influence is sudden misfortune, burdens to bear, can mean death of a loved one. And now quite possibly it's telling me that there would be a death in my family in the near future, though I don't uh, deeply like to think about that or reflect on it too much. 
it can also mean like the death of, of a relationship within a family. The cards aren't always to do with death, but it would depend strongly on the other cards that are coming up within your layout. Now, considering that my family and I haven't talked a lot in the past, I really don't know what's going on with them and I feel pretty guilty about that half the time but the rest of the time I reason it out to the fact that they could have very easily come and seen me and they haven't so I'm not gonna worry about it too much but your second card within the wand is to do with family it's the family position it doesn't only deal with family but also it does deal with close friends and people that are around you for the most part. Third card within the spread, within the wand actually, is your place of hopes, emotion, and strong devotion. And what this represents is what you hope for. What your feelings are on whatever matter it is you actually asked about and what you're devoted to. Now, the card that comes up is the sun and it means pleasure in the simple life, frivolousness, lightheartedness, and gaiety. Uh, and basically, what I hope in my life is for peace, tranquility, fun, uh, pleasure in the simple life. And so it makes a lot of sense. And uh, so there we have the sun and within the place of hopes. And then finally, we have the finality, the final place within the actual Celtic Cross method. And it means the final outcome. Now, the card that I have coming up is the Wheel of Fortune. It means uh, success, victory, triumph. The subject of the reading will get her wish. And uh, victory within the outcome of what's taking place. And in this, it's telling me that though I may screw up in explaining all of this to you, and I may stammer and stutter a little bit while I'm talking to you. I'm going to succeed. This is going to happen. The cards are going to lay out on the table. You're going to understand exactly what I'm trying to tell you. And so there we have a great partnership with each other.